Notice the picture on the board. If you remember our previous lecture, you will remember that when we were using a magnifying glass in front of the sun, the parallel rays of the sunlight were getting converged at a point on the paper due to which the paper was burning. Or in other words, we can say that parallel rays were forming their image at this particular point on the paper due to which the paper managed to burn. Now let us find out how we can obtain this through a ray diagram. And we shall also find out how we can obtain various other images if the object is brought closer to the convex lens. Consider this animation closely. Here, parallel rays of light have been considered because the object is placed at infinity, similar to the case where the magnifying glass was placed in sunlight. Now, when these parallel rays are coming in, after refraction, they are meeting at the focus, that is, at F2, which lies on the principal axis. Now, since we have considered a thin lens, we consider refraction only at the central portion of the lens and not at both the surfaces. So what kind of an image are we obtaining? We find that when the object is placed at infinity, we are getting parallel rays of light. These parallel rays after refraction are converging and meeting at a point that is F2. So the image is being formed at the focus. And the image is real because we are obtaining it in the real world. And even if we keep a screen over here, we shall obtain it. It is inverted and it is highly diminished because an object kept at infinity giving out a parallel beam, the parallel beam gets focused at a point. So it is highly diminished. Now we move the object closer to the lens. Here, we keep the object in between position 2F1 and infinity. Now, why do you think we have considered 2F1 and 2F2? We have considered these points because these points are lying at a distance that is twice the distance of F1 from the optical center. That is, the distance OF1 from the optical center to F1 is half that of O2F1. Similarly, O2F2 is double that of OF2. Now, we have kept the object beyond 2F1. We shall soon find out the significance of 2F1 and 2F2. So when the object is placed at 2F1, we are considering two rays, a ray parallel to the principal axis and a ray passing through the optical center. The ray parallel to the principal axis after refraction is passing through the focus and the ray that is passing or is incident at the optical center passes through without any deviation. So the image is being formed as we can see. So what are the characteristics of this image? When the object is placed beyond 2F1, we find that after refraction, the image is being formed in between F2 and 2F2. The image is real because we are obtaining it in the real world through the intersection of these two rays. The image is inverted, as you can see, and the size of the image is diminished. Now, this principle is applied in the case of a camera where the object, or let's say if your picture is being taken, you are beyond 2F1 of the lens of the camera. So when the object is placed beyond 2F1, the camera is able to capture the image distinctly. Now consider this situation where the object has been placed at 2F1. Here we will find out the significance of the positions 2F1 and 2F2. Here we consider two rays coming from the object, one ray parallel to the principal axis and the other ray passing through the optical center. Now you will notice that the ray parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus after refraction and the ray incident at the optical center passes through 
without any deviation and the image is formed now let us find out the characteristics of this image we find that when the object is placed at 2f1 the image is also being formed at 2f2 and you will be interested to learn that the image is real because you are obtaining it in the real world through the intersection of rays it is inverted and the size of the image that we obtain is exactly equal to the size of the object that is there is no magnification involved so this is the position of these two 2f1 and 2f2 and this is the significance that is when the object is placed at 2f1 we get the image at 2f2 and the size of the object is equal to the size of the image now we move the object closer to the convex lens here we keep the object in between 2f1 and f1 and we consider two rays again a ray parallel to the principal axis which after refraction passes through the focus f2 and a ray that passes through the optical center without any deviation so let us find out the characteristics of the image obtained when the object is placed in between f1 and 2f1 after intersection of the rays the image is formed beyond 2f2 as you can see the characteristics of the image well it is real because you are obtaining it in the real world through the intersection of the rays it is inverted as you can see and also it is magnified that is the size of the image is greater than that of the object this principle is used in case of a slide projector even in movie halls you will notice that such projectors are used to actually play the movie on the screen what happens is the light source and the film are kept at a position in between f1 and 2f1 and the image that we obtain is magnified and this image is projected on the screen now we move the object closer and place it at f1 or the first principal focus now we again consider two rays a ray that is parallel to the principal axis which after refraction passes through f2 that is the focus and a ray that is incident at the optical center and passes through without any deviation now let us find out what happens to the characteristics of the image so when the object is placed at f1 we find that the image is being formed at infinity in other words we can say that these two rays are parallel to one another and they are not meeting at all or in other words they are meeting at infinity so the image is being formed at infinity it is due to this that the image is real inverted and the size is highly magnified because the image is being formed at infinity this principle is used in a collimator a collimator is a device that is used in another device called a spectrometer the purpose of this device is to obtain a parallel beam of light and this is done by keeping the light source at the focus of the lens now we come to our last consideration for a convex lens here the object is kept in between the focus f1 and the optical center now you will notice again we have considered two rays a ray that is parallel to the principal axis and a ray that is passing through the optical center now these two rays after they pass through the lens are not meeting in the real world instead you will find that they appear to be diverging from a point that lies on the same side as that of the object so let us find out what is happening over here we have considered these two rays this ray after refraction passes through f2 and this ray 
incident at the optical center passes by without any deviation now these rays are not meeting in space instead if we extrapolate these rays they appear to be coming from or diverging from a point that lies behind the mirror so we are not actually getting an image in the real world instead we are obtaining a virtual image so what are the characteristics of this image when the object is placed in between o and f1 that is the optical center and the focus the first principal focus the image is formed in between f1 and 2f1 that is on the same side as that of the object and the image is virtual because we are not able to obtain the image to the intersection of the rays in the real world the image is erect and it is highly magnified now can you tell me where this principle is used you will be interested to learn that this is the principle used in case of a magnifying glass for a magnifying glass the object is placed in between the optical center and f1 of the magnifying glass which has a convex lens and this forms a virtual image which is magnified and erect and it is this enlarged image that we are able to see when we hold up a magnifying glass in front of an object so taking a quick summary what did we learn we learned that when the image is being formed at f2 the position of the object is at infinity the size of the image is highly diminished and the nature is real and inverted when the object was placed beyond 2f1 but within infinity the image was formed in between f2 and 2f2 the size of the image was diminished and the nature was real and inverted when the object was placed at 2f1 the image was formed at 2f2 the size of the image was equal to the size of the object and the nature of the image was real and inverted and it is here we came to know about the significance of 2f1 and 2f2 we also learned that when the object is placed in between 2f1 and f1 the image is formed beyond 2f2 the size of the image is magnified and the nature of the image remains real and inverted moving on we learned that when we kept the object at f1 we obtained the image at infinity that is the refracted rays became parallel to one another the size of the image was highly magnified because the image was being formed at infinity and the nature of the image remained real and inverted but when we place the object in between o and f1 that is the optical center and focus we found that the image was formed on the same side as that of the object in between f1 and 2f1 the size of the image was magnified and the nature of the image was virtual and erect or upright 